Welcome to another edition of the Mizzou Minute. I'm Todd Palmer, beat writer for the Kansas City Star here at Memorial Stadium where Missouri took down South Carolina 24-10 today in Drew Locke's starting debut as quarterback. Matty Mock, of course, was suspended on Tuesday, opening the door for Locke to get his first career start. And quite frankly, the numbers aren't going to jump off the page at you. He was 21-28 for 136 yards with two touchdowns and no interceptions. That's actually the fewest yards any quarterback has thrown, the starting quarterback has thrown for this year. It's actually two fewer yards than Drew himself threw for in a backup role against Southeast Missouri in the opening game. But if you watch the game, the offense seemed to move a lot smoother in this one. It seemed like it helped get the run game untracked because they were able to do a little bit more in the passing game. They had to... The, the South Carolina defense had to be a little bit more respectful uh, of, of the passing game because uh, Drew Locke was very accurate with his passes. Um, I mean, he was so confident in the first touchdown to Nate Brown, an eight-yarder in the first quarter. He was already running off the field, pointing at the sky uh, after releasing the ball before it had, Brown had actually caught it. Um, the second touchdown uh, was as good a throw as you're going to see from a college quarterback. Uh, he, he held the ball, uh, you know, patted a couple times, waited for Nate Brown to get a little separation, and uh, zipped one right over the defensive back's head. Nate Brown went up and high-pointed it and was able to get a foot down. Great catch on Nate Brown's part as well, but a really good throw from Drew Locke. And that's the kind of thing that, that has people who evaluate talent uh, at the NFL level, um, and, and as well as you know other college uh, analysts, very excited about what Drew Locke can do. Um, obviously... Uh, we don't have a sense yet for who's going to start against Florida because, first of all, we don't even know uh, whether Matty Mock's going to be back from suspension or not. Gary Pinkle, after the game, said he won't make that decision until Sunday or Monday, um, and then presumably once he makes that decision, he'll have to weigh who he wants to play at quarterback. I would assume, based on today's result, um, that you're probably going to see Drew Locke, but, but that's not set in stone. Um, you know, obviously that's Gary Pinkle's decision, but I think Drew probably did enough to earn a second look. Uh, and look, quite they got the win, and that's what this is all about. So, um, there are a couple other takeaways from this game. The defense, I thought, really rebounded well. They, they got gashed in the middle of the field. There was some miscommunication and things like that at Kentucky. They seemed to correct a lot of that, um, and they played very well. They got a shutout in the second half for the third time in five games this season. They allowed fewer than 300 yards. They missed a lot of tackles, but they came up with plays when they needed to. The three interceptions in the third quarter were huge. A couple times South Carolina was driving, and they were able to snuff out those drives. And another time they were able to set up the offense for a touchdown. The last thing is I thought the offensive line stepped up today. And now whether they were playing harder because they knew they had a freshman quarterback back there uh, or, or whether they just were mad because of the loss the previous week and, or just all the, the talk about how they're not getting it done in the run game, whatever it was, the offensive line played pretty well today. You saw they had their 31 personnel with three tight ends and a running back, six offensive linemen out there, and they – powered the ball into the end zone at Ishwitter's third quarter touchdown run. They also ran out the final 642 of the game, lining up behind that offensive line and just driving it right down South Carolina's throat. It was an impressive performance at times for that offensive line and a good sign going forward. They need to build off this, though, because they're going to face a much better defense next week when Florida comes to town for homecoming. Be sure to visit KansasCity.com to read about today's game and to follow along as we get prepared for next week when Florida comes calling.